Hi, my name is Tom Vos. I'm from Avans University of Applied Science. And today we are in Hilvarenbeek, a small village in the south of the Netherlands. And we're going to visit the real SME Schuivens. Let's go inside and ask them what they're doing. Welcome in Schuivens. Please come in. And who are you? And my name is Jessica, and I work for uh, Schuivens, and I'm responsible for CSR within our company. Um, what kind of building is this? Uh, this used to be the house of the family, and eventually it is built into our company where 45 employees are uh, working. And what do you produce? We make uh, workwear for retailers, uh, logistics companies, uh, supermarkets. Um, yeah, mainly based in the Netherlands. Yeah, we take care of the whole process uh, from the designs um, yeah, to distributing the clothes to our uh, customers. Schuivens exist for more than 100 years. Why did you decide to become sustainable? Because we are a family-based company, but we find it important to also think about uh, the next generations. And uh, because we used to produce uh, clothing here, we also took care of our employees. And we want to make sure that um, yeah, the people in the, in the factories that we work with uh, in other countries also can work in, safe, uh, in a safe environment. So therefore we um, became a member of Fairware Foundation. They audit our factories and um, yeah, based on those audits we work on improving uh, labor conditions um, uh, at the factories. How do you communicate about um, sustainability to all your stakeholders? Well, because we are a member of uh, Fairware Foundation uh, and also the Dutch government, um, we uh, have to publish all of our goals and achievements. So annually we, uh, we publish a report uh, that is available uh, on our website and uh, yeah, we can share it with other stakeholders as well. Is it easy to make such a report? It's not always easy being a small uh, company uh, and yeah, you have limited, uh, limited time of course, but while we work with, with other um, uh, yeah, organizations such as Fairware Foundations, they can help you of course with, uh, with setting goals and, uh, and work on it. How transparent are you to your customers? Uh, we are very open and transparent to our customers. We show them, for example, exactly how prices are built up, how much does it extra cost to uh, provide for a living wage and uh, for a circular product. Um, and in this way, um, yeah, we can uh, make sure that everyone can contribute to, uh, to a sustainable product. So, customers have to pay a real fair price. Uh, yeah, that's what we hope that we can all have a share in this. Yeah, all the customers are very uh, positive about it because we are so open, uh, open about the prices. But is openness, transparency not always a difficulty? Uh, sometimes it is difficult, uh, especially when yeah, you, uh, you find something in your supply chain, for example, that is not uh, in compliance with what we uh, stand for. Um, to give you an example, a few years ago we started working with a new production facility and uh, we always have the facilities audited by a Fairware Foundation or a similar organization um, and we find out um, yeah, visiting, while visiting the factory that there was a 14 year old worker in the, in the factory. So um, then you're, yeah, you're faced with, with child labor so um, yeah that was really vulnerable for us also to be open about it but we decided to uh, to be transparent because I don't think there's any supply chain that is fully um, yeah fully perfect and uh, and there are no issues there's always things to work on so we like to share it with others and um, yeah hopefully also be an example um, on how you can uh, solve issues and work on it and in the end we made sure that uh, the worker was provided with education, um, he still got salary um, to make sure that he could also provide for his family while he was the, the breadwinner. Yeah, I think it was good to be open about it and uh, provide an example for others on yeah, how you can uh, resolve issues when you find something in your supply chain. That's really open, I would say. Could you show us a bit of the recycling process? 
Uh, yes, I can show you our distribution center where we uh, collect and uh, sort our uh, old worn clothing from our customers and make sure it's ready for shipment to, uh, to Turkey, to the recycling factory. Let's go to it. Okay, let's come. Hey Jeske, could you tell us a bit about the recycling process? Uh, yes, here in our distribution center we collect all the old worn clothing from our customers, uh, which are collected in these um, big bags. Um, uh, after it, when it's here, then uh, we have a machine to make sure um, yeah, we make a cut in it. As you can see here, um, yeah, otherwise we have to pay extra custom uh, charges, so we make sure that it's not uh, reusable in the product that it is now. And then after it is cut it in this machine, then uh, we pack it on the pallets and it's shipped to the recycling factory. Um, and they uh, add 50% uh, we use pet polyester with it. So um, yeah, in the end it's 50% old worn clothing and 50% recycled pet polyester. So yeah, that makes a, a, a sustainable and circular product. And do you show this process um, to your customers too? Uh, yes, we um, count all the uh, products that are uh, collected from each of the customers and uh, we calculate how much uh, they uh, are saving uh, on energy, on water and on uh, CO2 emissions. Um, so um, yeah, we can really motivate them as well um, yeah, what they are saving with uh, yeah, collecting uh, old worn clothing. And so, in the end, we can conclude this is sustainable. Yes, that's what we uh, try to do.